Hello, people of the North Pacific! Welcome to a new episode of RP Spotlight. I'm Ark, and I'll be hosting. We have Kratox recording. Today, we've got a guest who's... He's an old face here in the uh, roleplay community, a very familiar face, and one of the more uh, experienced members of the community, Vapia. Vapia, how you doing? I'm doing well. Today's a good day. It's good to hear. So, you've been in TNP RP for quite some time, I take it. How did you come to Nation States and the North Pacific? What 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 drew you to both communities? So that's that's a funny that's a funny uh, thing. So I used to watch extensively this YouTuber named uh, Pyrocynical, and they uploaded a video about like this, this nation on Nation States, and someone in the comments said the name of the website because I was trying to find it, and. Um, I found it, and then I just made my nation in uh, September 25th, 2017, and I've just been here ever since. And did you did your nation like spawn in the North Pacific, or did you come here from another region? Oh, I I spawned here, so it was uh, it was good RNG, as one would say. And um, when did you, when did you come to Nation States? Like, how long have you been here? Uh, September 25th, 2017, uh, last September, it was my, uh, fourth anniversary. Uh, I didn't know what to do really, so I put my, uh, I put my flag in paint.net and just drew a really bad cake. Uh, I think I still have it, but, uh, I don't, don't want to go look for it. Ah, uh, all right. And this is the, uh, this is your current, you're, sp- you're talking about your current flag, right? Yes, my, my current flag. Which uh, who made it for me? It was um, Illusio who made who uh, made it for me, and they uh, they made a lot of uh, good stuff for me, so, and I appreciate them as a friend. So uh, if you Illusio if you listen to this, uh, shout out. I'm sure he'll be happy to hear. I'm sure he'll be happy to hear that he appreciates um, what he's done for you. Now that you've explained how you got to Nation States and how you got to North Pacific. What drew you into the roleplay, and what drew you to Strange Real specifically as a setting? So, when I came here to uh, the North Pacific, um, this was during the era. I think the Discord had, like, just popped off, had just launched, uh, at least for the, um, for the R&B side, but... Actually, I don't even know if it had this if it had at this point because I wasn't there. I wasn't really there there for the uh, the Discord discussion. But this was during the era where most of the R and Bers were uh, of the R and B R peers were just on the R and B every single day, and so I caught them in the middle of like R P banter because back then on S R the R P banter was uh basically just leaders like talking smack to each other. Uh, and that was like the, the most extent of the RP. Uh, for for the most part, there were some people who did some other ex- more extensive RPs, but RP was very RP was very simple back then. And I caught them doing that, and I just kind of jumped in, and I got into I got into some fights with some of the RPs, and um, I kind of just I kind of just stayed, and uh, yeah. Um, I got uh, into it with uh, with HKE, who's no longer here, unfortunately. But um, I got into it with HKE. There's a little a little bit of drama because there was always a little bit of drama every single day, or whatever. But um, eventually, I got into uh, a thing with uh, Lala, and then after that, that's when I joined the uh, the Strange Real map. And you've you've been here for a while, uh, so let's dive into um, your your nation specifically, Vapia. What were the main like political and cultural inspirations behind Vapia? What really like drove you with this nation, both in its early days and more towards the present? So in the beginning, um, I didn't really have any like serious political political like experience or i didn't 
really understand a lot of things about culture. So, and I know many people have asked, have asked this question, why is my nation called the Western Vapi and where is the Eastern Vapi? So I'm also kind of going to answer that question here. Um, I called it Western Vapi because back then I wanted my nation to like be known as like a Western like nation. So I thought for some reason that putting the word Western in there would make it sound Western, which it doesn't, it doesn't really do that. Um, so that's why there is no East. That's why there is no Eastern Vapia, but the original concept for, uh, Western Vapia actually was that this was before I joined the, uh, the RP map. I thought my nation would be like a small, like, a small little nation. That's why I called it a column. That's why I originally called it a colony of uh, a settler colony of like, re- of like a bunch of like religious people, which didn't really pan out anything further than that. And it was around this time when I was exploring my own ethnic cultural identity, because I knew uh, that my family uh, was extensively Italian American, but I never really understood what that meant until like I got a little bit a little bit older, and that's when I kind of def- I kind of got to seriously refine a lot of my stuff. Even even until recently, some of my stuff was uh, in the RP was getting um, refined. So the cultural basis for my nation is that it reflects the background of some of my ancestors all and also basically is supposed to just be a, a strange uh, version of Italy but also infuses it with a lot of uh, New York culture because New York is uh, is where I'm from and it is a uh, it is a cultural culturally it's um it's a culturally conservative nation with a strong uh, with a strong youth rebellious uh background um what else it's also a nation which is it's young relative relative to everyone else because my nation in history was birthed in i believe 1851 and a lot of other nations have uh histories of unified history spanning back a lot further and my nation basically is just a nation an italian nation an Italian base nation that wants to cement its place in the world and be important. Mm. And and leading on to that, like a desire to be of great significance on the world stage, it's like if you if 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 you were to open a map of the uh, of Strange Real. You'll find Vapia. You'll find your nation as like little little pockets everywhere. So it's so you've got a bit of an empire going on. Can you can you like elaborate on that? Like how so, how did you, did you originally intend for this empire? Like how so, how how did it come? How did like the process go to be? Like you have this empire spanning the whole world. Um. So when I joined the map, I didn't originally intend to become as big as I am, which I am not the biggest. My nation is like 104,000 pixels, which um, I know that culturally in SR, you know, a large pixel count is still something that's very prevalent and sought after. But I choose to be I try to be a little bit more humble about it uh, just because it's something that something that it's that's an attitude that probably should be taken a little bit more seriously um so what originally happened is that back then um i'm gonna give the i'm gonna give the uh i'm gonna give the honest answer for this question so back then um so i had a couple of of my family members actually my uh internal family members who uh, played SR. Their nation names were the Modern Russian Empire and uh, Polonia and Cryobia. They, those were the my uh, the American, Polish, and Russian clones at the time. And what used to what used to happen is that uh, trade uh, trading pixels wasn't banned yet. So at the start, I was just like, okay. Uh, so what if? 
So what if I give you X amount of pixels and you give me like this thing and therefore I will become more stronger? And that's something that we kind of, that we kind of did for a little bit until that was banned. But um, that did that didn't really account for many of the of, of the early empires um uh pixel games. What mostly happened is that. A lot of God Mighty Wars happened, and a lot of people just decided that they were going to declare war on me on the, in the early days, which doesn't really make any sense now. And uh, it was kind of weird. It doesn't. Ha- it does. It doesn't really happen anymore. But um, yeah, it was kind of strange. There was a couple of people. There was uh, there was uh, Outer Bezzy Great. Uh, there was Loon. Uh, there are a couple of these nations that declared war on me were Nazis, by the way. So. Uh, I, I, I believe that some of these nations were just trying to replicate uh, Nazi gains in RP for whatever reason. Um, but um, that's just the that's just the OOC thing. And uh, the last time I seriously gained um, any sort of significant territory was the OC and Punitive War, which was I believe it was SR's like fifth World War. I wanna I want I would venture to guess because there's been a couple of them. And uh, that was when I took uh, a little piece of territory off of uh, HK. Nothing too big. But that's just the OOC history. So the IC history is that in 1851, uh, West of Appy unified, and then it was ruled by by a monarchy. And, you know, monarchies back in, it was, uh, back then I was, Im- uh, I was emulating, uh, uh, you know, the European times during colonialism. So, the first war that I have recorded in my hit, the first colonial war anyway, was with the small kingdom in the uh, north of Ania, right above, right below my nation, uh, which I now call Leitza. So it was the uh, Leitzen uh, Vapian War, which was uh, with the small, with the small kingdom. Um, and then in the 1930s, uh, Western uh Vapia went to war with uh Illusia because I had a small a small little uh trade port uh right next to their nation which uh West of Vapia lost which uh this was after by the way in the 19 I want to say in 1919 the fascist uh, a fascist organization took control of the uh the nation um and decided that they were going to go all colonialist, uh, not colonialist, um, just like straight up like fascist imperialism. So, so they did, a, and and this group did a lot of did a lot of horrible things, and that's what what's that's all what part of the fact is that uh, makes them get overthrown in the 1950s. But we went to war with the uh, Illusions and lost horribly because they're uh, techn- technological at the time, their navy was one of the, was one of the best in the world, and I venture to say that right now they are they are the best navy in the world. And then in the nineteen uh, in the in the, uh, in the I want to say late nineteen thirties, early forties, we went to war with the uh, with the uh, the kingdom of the Althusia, which uh, is one of the nation, which is the the colony that I have next to Illusia. Which uh, is one of the uh, greatest uh, military achie- uh, colonial military achievements of the uh, of the fascist era, and then in the fifties, the fascists get overthrown because they start uh, betraying all the groups that had originally supported them in exchange for power, and then a republic is declared. Uh, in 1956, I believe I want to say. And then after that, there really isn't too much that too much that happens uh, colonial wise. When we get to the two thousands, that is when the OC and punitive war happens, and uh, um, the OC and punitive war happens. And we gain the territory of uh, of song of Songtown, which is called um, is a nation which at at that point in time was ran by a former member of the uh, the Hong Kong Empire, the Celestial Empire. That's what HK's uh, nation name was. That was his uh, 
his name. A member, uh, a former member of that royal family, was ruling on behalf of the Vapians before the ongoing rebellion. And then, uh, the next thing that happens is that in 2023, uh, right before the election, uh, the uh, oh, actually, sorry, I completely skipped over the civil war. Uh, minor civil war between from 2019 to 2020, which overthrows uh, the elected uh, socialist government because the military was afraid that they would start investigating them and doing a bunch of uh, stuff that would harm the overall historical culture of the nation. Uh, in 2020, uh, 2021 and 2023, uh, the nation of Kamiat declares war on on us and they declared war on the nation of the imperium which uh anyone in the community knows uh steve that was his former sr former sr nation uh we i was given control of his former emperor when he left so they declared war on uh on us because their nation was ruled by an advar an avant-garde France. I don't know if anyone's played Red Flood, but basically, accelerationist, uh, an accelerationist regime. They declare war on us because they believe that our trade ships are trying to secretly like destabilize their nation. It starts a rebellion as, along with invasion. We take uh, the a northern part of the nation that used to belong to the Imperium, which is now an Imperium rump state. And then uh, the United States of Tanabon falls, which was an ally. It was a United States uh, clone, but from the 1960s, military wise, militarily wise. And uh, we established uh, a republic on an island that they used to own uh, because it was being ran by uh, a rival state. And so... The Vapian Empire is a lot less of just us conquering stuff, and a lot of it has to do with propping up old allies. Uh, all right, so there's there's a bit more of a degree of realism than if someone were to just say, I've conquered this land, boom, done. Yes, so the Vapian Empire relies a lot more on cooperation. So... In the recent years, in the in the twenty twenties, a bunch of agreements uh, were were made. So, ever since the republic was established after the fall of the fascist, the military was basically running uh, the the colony of Leitza until um, a proper a proper liberal government uh, was. Or actually, no, it wasn't the liberals who established it. It was the uh, the market liberals who were. Uh, like free economy uh, stuff like that, who weren't really interested too much in the foreign uh, the foreign aspect. The prime minister Gino Leone uh, sponsored a bill to give the uh, the late sins uh, in autonom an autonomous state, which became the govern the governat of Leitza, uh, which. Um, it was a nation that it was a nation that was basically uh, it's not it wasn't a protectorate but it wasn't a colony it was somewhere in between in between that we still have control over over the economy but they have control over local issues and uh, the and uh, for for all for Altus which is which is the name we changed it from the Altus the Altusia to Altus. Um, the, the Vapian uh, government struck a deal with uh, the locals, and we set up the Empire of Altus, which, if you can imagine uh, the British for a second with the, the, with the British in India, uh, the they had the Empire of India, and the Emperor was uh, the British monarch. It's the same thing. The Vapian king, um, who was restored in the 2019-2020 Civil War, uh, they became the uh, the king emperor, so they became the emperor of Altus. But Altus now has its own elected government, and they have control over local issues. But we still we still have uh, most most of the control over their economy. Um, and that is the thing that 
we like to we like to um to focus on because uh the Vapian Empire is mostly interested in the uh, economic part of of empire, and it would be ni- it's nice that they speak our language, and it's nice that a lot of them follow the same religion. But at the same time, uh, a lot of people in the new generation, uh, the post fascist generation, are, uh, are are ashamed of a lot of the crimes committed by the fascist regime. And even though there are a decent amount of people who deny that legacy uh it is still so, it is still something that we prefer to cooperate we prefer to cooperate and um it's also the same thing with the with the song tower with the song tower uh, people uh we're mostly interested in in ta- in uh seeing the money from that nation so the empire is mostly interested in the economics, but it's also interested in protecting its interests and its allies. That's why the military is in every single part of the empire, even uh, even in the outer parts of the empire. Although uh, the most recent event in Vapia, which I have yet to RP, is the Union Act because. It was the coalition of the social liberals and the social democrats, which is the most left radical party in Fapia. They spon- they sponsored and passed a bill to change the status of uh, Leitza from a governat to the to the state of uh, of Leitza, which basically. Um, so both Leitza and Altus were ran by governor generals. But uh, but now, uh, what you call it? Leitza uh is no longer uh the head of state is no longer the uh the 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 governor general but the national consul, and the national consul, if you can imagine, is even less powerful than the title of governor general, which uh, if you take inspiration from uh. If we take inspiration from, uh, if, or if you look at other nations that have governor generals, they basically have like almost no power. So the national consul is basically uh, the furthest amount of uh, autonomy, and changing it, changing Leitza from the governor to the state is the most amount of autonomy that they could give without having the uh, Leitza leave the empire entire in, uh, in its entirety. Because uh, the rest of the uh, of the, of the legislature uh, wouldn't pass the bill if they were given full independence, and the social liberals and the social democrats uh, also disagreed on giving full independence because the social democrats wanted to uh, threaten to uh, leave the uh, leave the coalition, start a crisis, a uh, government crisis if they uh, didn't at least give uh, full autonomy. So now the uh, the state is at its maximum autonomy, but now that the uh, the, the the conservative party is in power be, uh, due to a government crisis caused by the social democrats and the social and the social liberals uh, splitting uh, up over, I believe it was um, there was a there was a crisis in the in the uh, the kingdom of Bal- of Abalnia, which is uh, a protector of Vapia. There was a split in the decision over uh, over what response that they would give, because what happened in Abalonia is that the the government, the king, uh, partnered with the prime minister who uh, was put into power uh, through a rigged election, and they decided to declare martial law to be able to take absolute control over the nation. Uh, it failed miserably because the military uh, began to mu- be into mutiny. Uh, the uh, the, Ab- the Abanian trade partners decided to cut off trade, and it started this whole big thing. And so, after uh, the elect, after an election, a, a very quick election was forced to be had. The conservatives came to power in a landslide victory because the liberals, even though they didn't really, they didn't really do anything wrong. Uh, they still, it, it, uh, 
they still did did a couple things wrong. No one wants to vote for the Social Democrats because they started the whole the whole uh, problem. No one wants to vote for the Social Liberals because not the Social Liberals, the Market Liberals because the uh, Gino Leon, who was the last Prime Minister, the first Prime Minister of uh, the the new uh, Kingdom government. He did a couple things wrong, and he didn't fulfill many of his promises, so he wasn't unpopular. So they only left the conservatives left to uh, be elected, and they won uh, largely off of protest votes. So what happened then is that the government uh, went into uh, – the government activated their soldiers in Abalnia and basically took over the country and uh, allowed, the, allowed the people to uh, elect in a new Democratic-Republican government. So, in Leitza, uh, so in Leitza, the government is riding, uh, or in Vapia, the government is riding on a wave of, uh, of popularity, and they uh, completely dislike the idea of an autonomous Leitza, because in Vapia there's this uh, pol- there's this uh, philosophical idea called Risorgimento, uh, which is based off of the Italian Risorgimento, which. Uh, which is basically that uh, there are people who live in who live in parts of the world that are close to us that should be a part of our nation, and they and the conservatives believe that Leitza should be a direct part of Vapia, and everyone who lives there should be given Vapian citizenship. So, currently in the part in, in the uh, the parliament, there is a bill t- that will. Um, if passed, would uh, unionize the states of Leitza and Vapia to create uh, Great Vapia. Um, if you look back historically, I don't know if this is akin to the, the Union Act between Scotland and uh, England to form a Great Britain. This is essentially what the conservatives believe will uh, is is the best uh, is the best way to deter the independence movement. Is that they'll integrate it fully into Vapia and give everyone citizenship. Okay. So it does, it does seem like you've put a whole hell of a lot of thought into this and a lot of detail. And that's really admirable. Uh, yeah, I've, uh, I've, I've tried to improve my RP on a lot, uh, uh, on a lot of things. Cause there's, cause throughout my time here, I've had a bunch of really crap RPs and, I, and a lot of crap, uh, on the spot wall bone that I just never changed. And a, and a lot of my history was was a, there was a lot of copies of things like some of my some of my nations uh, my nation had a lot of things that were named directly after real life things so I went through a whole origination process uh, recently within the last like two years so everything has a. Uh, been uh at least in my mind everything has been fixed and a lot of things have been taken care of now. Hmm. So, with all of that being said, what are your future plans for Vapia? Like, do you do you have any RP ideas floating around, or ideas ideas you want to do by yourself, ideas you want to do with other people in the SR community? So, right now, uh, I mentioned uh, Song Tao, and I mentioned. Um, I mentioned the Union Act. I have not, I have not RP out the Union Act yet, which I need to do. In Song Tao, there's a, actually let me get into that real quick. So in Song Tao, after the war, uh, it was ran, uh, it was ran by the mil- the military and the leader of the nation, uh, who was the uh, the governor of the of the colony, was uh, Rodolfo Rodolfo. Um, Rodolfo something. Uh, he was the general who uh, led the campaign against the uh, what you call it the uh, the Hong Kong Empire's uh, forces uh, during the Osin Punitive War, and for ten years he ran the colony. And uh, after he retired. Uh, we wanted uh, the Vapian government wanted to put on a new constitution and uh, make the country a formal uh, protectorate rather than a colony because it was it, it's one of the farthest colonies that uh, that we had and it was its defense was kind of uh, un, untenable without it having some uh, uh, at least some self-reliance so 
we gave it a constitution and because of uh nationalism in the country we wanted to uh the government wanted to uh put uh put someone who the people liked or at least uh felt closer to in power so we found a deposed member of the hke royal family and we made them the empress well the empress after one year decided that they were going to uh throw off the uh the vapian uh yoke and decided that they were going to start a uh, rebellion or, or rev revolution um that revolution now is winding down and the loyalists, uh, the pro Senate, pro democracy, uh, because the, the 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 empress is an absolute monarchist, uh, and that's not very popular, because these uh, these people are uh, the people of Songtao are very democratically minded. Uh, so the I have yet to RP the final uh, resolution of the war, but what is going to happen is that the uh, what you call it. The war is going to end. The Senate, who is the ally of the Vapping government, is going to uh, uh, abolish the, the monarchy, abolish the, the office of empress, establish a republic with a prime minister and a president. And the president is going to be the former Khan of the nation of Lucidia because he is a pro-democracy uh a pro uh, democracy uh, man who uh, left uh, the position of Khan in his nation, and we don't want to install that. Being, and there aren't that many great candidates so far in Sungtown who would be a good fit. So at least the first president will be uh, the man from Luc from Lucidia who supports democracy and will hopefully be a good man to transition uh, the nation away from a monarchist nation to a fully uh, functioning democratic state. Um, as for uh, RPs that I have not yet even considered yet, um, the, Afir, the Afiris is a nation that is not added to the map yet, but they are um, but they, but they will be, and they will be bordering the territory of Leitza. So hopefully, they will be some diplomatic RP. Or if we want to uh, repeat the past, maybe there will be a war RP because the the person behind it, uh, M, who's hosted other RP spotlights before, um, in the past when he was on SR, uh, we did a couple of wars. Uh, we never really, fin we never really finished them. So if that's if that that is a possibility, but uh, I think he wants to be a little more diplomatic ar around this time, which is uh, completely completely fine with me. No complaints about that. Um, other than that, uh, there really isn't anything else going on besides the uh, on pause war uh, war between the uh, Republic of or the United States of Monroe. Which is the the Tanabon nation that I set up on that island, versus uh, the nation of Berkia or Sky Clan, over the uh, over war crimes committed by that nation, which caused a, a refugee crisis and a bunch of people fled to uh, to Monroe and to Vapia. You you sound like you've got a bit on your plate, but what has been your favorite role play to write? throughout your whole time being here in this community? I believe my favorite RP to write, it was an RP that I've kind of, I've half, which uh, I've half erased and uh, I've half uh, not erased. Um, in my head, anyway, that this RP is integrated into the uh, modern Civil War RP, but there was... An insurrection in the military. I don't remember what the RP was called. Um, I don't remember what the RP was called, but it was basically a military conspiracy by a fascist uh, clique in the military to overthrow the monarchy. 
and a lot of stuff have happened in this RP, including the assassination of the former king uh, and the current king almost being assassinated, being barely saved by his guards. And it was a very dramatic RP. Um, and it was one of one of my favorites to write because it was the most extensive RP that involved characters, actual characters that I've that I've done because I haven't done too much character RP over my time here, and it's something that I want to get uh, better at. Is there anybody um, here in the community here in TNPRP that you you look up to that you? Um, take inspiration from so specifically who i look up to uh well the two the two answers that immediately pop into my head are mad jack and uh pridania who are uh mad jack is the former head of the former head rp admin and probably is the current head rp admin i've well, at least I can I consider them uh, my friends. Uh, I've known them for the entire time that I've been here in uh, TNP. I have known them extensively, and I consider them to be some of my uh, closest uh, friends in the community. And uh, Pridenia, with his RP for the King of Valhalla, definitely has inspired me a lot, and has inspired me to do some off the uh off the uh off the page uh things especially with their recent reading up for the king to valhalla uh i kind of it made me kind of do one that on uh do a reading of an rp which i've not decided to do yet but that might be something that i want to do and uh as for anyone else i can't think of anyone else at the any of anyone else at the moment? No, nah, I think it's. I think it's. I think it's only. I think only those two come to mind. But um. But um. As uh. As for if we're still gonna if we're still on the uh, looking up to, uh, I made a decent amount of uh, friends and allies here in TNP. Uh. I've RP'd with a lot of people. Uh, M is, is a really good RP. -er. Steve is a really good RP. -er. Um, Illusia is a really good RP. -er. Uh, Volstogen is a really good RP. -er. Uh, there's just a lot of people in the community who are good RPers, and uh, those who uh, I've taken uh, even even a minor amount of inspiration from. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm sure they'll be really happy to hear you um, shout them out like that. It seems it seems like you've made yourself quite at home here in here in the community. Yes, it's been a decent amount of time. I don't really feel like uh, I'm going anywhere. Um, I feel at this point that it, it's been it's been four years. I feel like. I'm sort of indebted to this community, and I, I love it a lot. Mm. So, um, let's go to some uh, audience questions. So, to the audience, um, what questions do you have for Vapia about Vapia? Here's one from Kratox. Do you have any suggestions for people just getting started with roleplay here in TNP? Okay. So, the most prevalent kind of person who comes onto RP, and I see, I see this a lot, and it's something that I really wish I didn't see, but in the current culture, uh, with the current uh, YouTube culture, um, a lot of people come on here and they are hung up on, you know, military and expansion and being a big nation. Uh, the reality is that most nations in the world are not big and they're not military. They don't have a strong military prowess. And the thing that I think people should focus on is developing their culture. What, what, what does their nation mean? Who are the people? What are their stories? What is their history? Why are, why are they here? And what is the 
uh, our, what is the RP year's goal of role playing this nation? And the most important thing about RP is that you're role playing for fun. You know, you're not here to do a job. You're here to do your, like this is a hobby. This isn't a job. So have fun with it. Okay, some pretty good advice. What is the vaping government's current official stance on the deteriorating situation in Listova? So Listovia. Uh, okay, the Listovia situation. Um, a little bit of background. Um, the five kingdoms in Ye and Yemet are uh, dis are uh, arguing over a disputed region in Fusia called Listovia. Um, as Yemet is a, is a strong ally of Vapia and a member of the Pax Havanic and Laurent, which Vapia is the premier nation of, uh, Vapia wishes that, you know, see, not, not, not necessarily out in the open, but um, since the Five Kingdoms took, uh, took Listovia off of Yemet, or at least part of it, Yemet, uh, we believe that Yemet should take back Listovia, but Secretly, diplomatically, Vapia does not wish for the Five Kingdoms to be kicked off of um, Fusia because it believes that it would create too much animosity between Pax and the Five Kingdoms, which uh, Vapia is a good trade trade partner with. So, all in all, we just want peace. Uh, that is that is all that we can really hold for. Bad Mill RP is a bit infamous, so much that so so much so that the heiress that the uh, my apologies, I'm reading this wrong. Yeah, the heiress getting started thread specifically calls it out. How would someone go about RPing a war in a good way? Well, the thing to understand about war is that war is bad. If you could say it, it's, it's a little, that's a little bit of an oversimplification, but war in generally is not the great thing that is romanticized to be. And a lot of people don't don't understand that war being romanticized is a big problem. At, at least, at least back then, it's a lot. It's a, it's a thing that a lot of people are starting to realize now. But the way to go about a war is that it needs to. Well, at least, oh, so it needs to be. Cooperate. It needs to be cooperative. There needs to be de a decent reason for it to happen, and if it doesn't, that needs to be that needs to be acknowledged. Oocely, because a lot of people are hung up on like idealistic reasons for war, and they you know, sometimes they genuinely believe the ideal the idealism that they're trying to RP. Um. And for a uh, sensitive for sensitive subjects like war crimes, know that in war a lot of bad stuff happens. And if you are going to RP a war crime, obviously, obviously make it so that it's not framed in a good thing. <laughs> Framing in a good thing is actually largely banned here, and you can get into serious trouble with that. But um, yeah, basically TLDR. Make it make a war appear respectable, make it realistic, make it believable. Yeah, that is something it does seem like some people do struggle with a lot. And I apologize for my um botched reading of that question. I didn't, it didn't register Eris getting started thread as the getting started thread for the Eris setting. <laughs> What suggestions do you have for good internal RP other than civil war? That is that is a problem in certain areas of RP where you can't really think of anything to do other than um a civil war. Um, so a lot of people don't realize that um the thing that the, the things that happen there in our everyday lives can affect BRP. You can focus on character RP, so you can focus on a character that you've come up with and what they do in their life. Um, if you're into politics, if you're into local politics, you can RP 
local political happenings, and I know I know a decent amount of people do this. Um, the uh, advice I have to give is that you should avoid having characters that and this has happened a lot in SR. You should avoid characters that have like one personality trait and that's it. Um, have characters that actually that actually do things and i know that seems like something that can be a little bit hard to come up with but you can use a lot you can use people in your life as inspiration you can use you know people who are famous as inspiration there's a lot of things that you can you can do for internal rp that aren't just political you can focus on cultural things you can focus on you know what's your nation's like favorite what's your nation's favorite this and that and but there's a lot of things that you could that you could focus on. There's a lot of ideas that a lot of people don't realize, and it's a it's it's a bit it's a lot of shame that a lot of people focus on only the serious, heavy-handed topics like civil wars. But it's very easy to come up with a internal RP, at least in my opinion. What logic goes into making a good map claim beyond the basic rules? Are certain setups more interesting to RP than others? Um, that depends. So, um, a good claim. So I know you. I know you said the on the basic basic rules, but the basic rule is forty k. Um, what you call it? Uh, forty k pixels is the max claim limit. Don't hog up too much coast. Those those are the two rules that that the two basic rules that come off the top of my head at the moment. But a good claim, it depends on what you want. So if you, so there is a lot of internal non-coastal land. So you could RP as like a steppe nation that is completely landlocked. You could RP as a nation that's on the coast and a, a decent trading hub. You can, it really depends on the idea that you have in your head, which is something that ideally you would have before making a claim. Because if you make a claim and then then try to come up with an idea afterwards, you tend to make it. You tend to come up with, come up with the idea that's around your that's around your claim, but you don't really give it too much cultural focus. So it really depends on the nation that you want to RP beforehand. That it's something that I believe that you should at least have a ba a basic understanding of your nation to pick it out before you make a claim. At least in my opinion. All right. Well, I think that's all the time we have. So I would like to thank you, Vapia, for coming on to talk about your RP nation. Those who showed up in the audience for being here to listen in, as well as Kratox for doing the recording. Uh, thanks to all of you. Uh, no problem, man. It's been uh, it's been good to it's been good to be here. Well, that about does it for this RP Spotlight episode. Um, uh, have a good night, the North uh, TNP, and uh, we'll see you again soon.